ok good evening this is the planning and zoning commission for the village of vernon hills and we need to start with a roll call chairman morris here. mr ballou present ms cotton here mr hesner mr heidner here mr mulcrone here mr gorog here we have a quorum ok this evening we have the consideration of case 13-01 uh, which is a petition uh, requesting pursuant to the vernon hills code of ordinance variety of things first approval to amend the zoning classification on the property uh, oops from r1 single family residential to bp business park or business district secondly to amend the code of ordinances to add a definition for motor vehicle terminal add self storage of commercial storage facilities as permitted uses and add motor vehicle terminal yard or facility and related uses and conditions of use to the list of special uses permitted in the business park district also approval of a special use permit to allow the placement of a motor vehicle terminal yard or facility uh, with certain variations on this property we're discussing and preliminary and final site and landscape plan approvals the proposed development which is known as truck repair and parking uh, is proposed to occupy the property at 1230 Butterfield Road formerly known as first student bus company it's currently zoned R1 single family. Property is 2.8 acres, located north of the EJ&E Railroad, and the Prairie Materials on the west side of Butterfield Road. Okay, with that, who is going to speak or testify on behalf of the petitioner? Okay, whoever that is has to come forward. <laughs> okay, the general rule we have is that you need to speak from a microphone, either the handheld one which is probably there somewhere I can't see it or the fixed yeah. one okay if you're going to actually provide testimony today we ask you to come forward and be sworn in first okay, okay why don't you identify who everybody is first Carl Krogstad landscape architect with Krogstad Land Design Limited uh, Todd Schaefer principal with Hager Engineering 1304 North Plum Grove Road in Schaumburg. David Shank, counsel for sellers here, Barnes and Thornburg, Chicago, Illinois. Yulia Kisluk, um, representing potential buyers, um, law office of Yulia Kisluk. Marius Bovianos. Victoria Petrenka, future buyers, hopefully. Yuri Petrenka. Rasa Yonaitinem. Okay. We'd ask you at this point, whoever's going to give testimony, if you could raise your right hand. We ask that you swear or affirm that any testimony you're about to give before this Commission of the Village of the Vernon Hills shall be the truth. I do. Okay. Who wants to speak first? Do you want me to do the intro? Well, yeah. Actually, maybe we, excellent point. We discussed this. Let Mr. Kalmar give a first an intro, and then we'll ask you to speak. How's that? Thank you. And you guys can pass that microphone back and forth until somebody drops it. So. <laughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, uh, a couple of quick thank yous. Um, first, a thank you to the uh, property owner's attorney, David Shank. Uh, he and I have spent hours on the phone working through this, and I appreciate all his help. And Todd, um, for your help with regards to this. Don Kathan, Greg's Landing HOA president, I appreciate all your help and, and your guidance with regards to this uh, petition and, and the willingness to work, work with us on this. Um, um, the property, which is 2.8 acres in size, um, was uh, annexed to the village back in 1994 as a part of a larger annexation that took place with regards to the Prairie Materials property. And unlike the Prairie Materials property, um, which had a, a, an annexation agreement and defined zoning uh, classification applied to it, this property did not, which meant that when it was annexed, there was no zoning applied, and as such, the, in the village, uh, the village code, the village or, uh, zoning ordinance, it automatically then became zoned R1 single family, which is two acre single family uh, residential. Um, which, as I'm sure we would all agree, is not an appropriate land use for that location. Um, the property also has been used since the early 60s um, for the operation, repair, and maintenance of school buses. And the current 
operator or current owner, I should say, for a student, closed the property a couple, uh, about two years ago, and, but has still um, continued to use it for training of school bus drivers um, on and off um, over that same period of time. There's also been some storage and parking of uh, school buses that have occurred over the, that period of time. Um, so it's in lighter use than it was previous to that. Um, tonight, um, you're asked to consider several um, items with regards to the property. First, the rezoning of the property um, to the BP Business Park District. Um, currently, the Prairie Materials uh, property is zoned, uh, the majority of the property is zoned BP um, and covers uh, basically the western two-thirds of that lot and the remainder of that property is zoned B1, which is retail business. And again, that was applied as a part of the annexation of that property. Um, you're also asked to consider a series of code amendments um, with regards to um, uh, adding a definition uh, adding uh, some additional permitted uses and then also adding some special uses with regards, with specific regards to the proposed use itself. Um, the land use uh, across the street, which is um, the regional PUD known as Greg's Landing, um, was uh, first initiated and, and reviewed in the mid-90s, and, and several of you were part of the commission at that time and um, were involved with that. Um, I think it's important, important to point out that as a part of that master plan, um, a lot of care was taken with regards to the landscaping and screening, especially throughout um, the area north of the EJ&E, e &E, extending northwards towards um, Greg's Parkway. And that screening took place in, in, in uh, combination, it was a combination of screening and berming along the rears of those yards um, uh, and also some expanded right-of-way area that was um, off the curb line for uh, Butterfield Road. Um, as you can see um, through aerial photography and the petitioner will talk tonight um, and uh, through the photos that are in your packet, um, the berm um, is fairly substantial in height, but more importantly is that the landscaping, which uh, the HOA, I believe, does a nice job maintaining, um, along with the property owners, has been supplemented and has matured quite nicely to provide a, a fairly heavy screening along um, the, the common property line, which would be the rears of the rear of the lots along and it backing up to Butterfield Road and what would be the right-of-way line for Butterfield Road itself. Um, so uh, there was some consideration as a part of that master plan in anticipation of the uses across the street and in coupling with the fact that Butterfield Road at some point was going to be widened as, it, as you see today to a five lane cross section and become a major north-south collector uh, of traffic within the, the county itself. Um, I think it really comes down to a matter of uh, a zoning classification that's been applied to a property that is not appropriate. And um, the R1 single family, while it is considered to be a holding district, um, I think if we were doing this again today, the, the zoning uh, for uh, the, that use at that time would have likely been applied um, to the property and we may only be sitting here today considering possibly a special use permit or um, a, a change to the use or maybe a new building or the like instead of a, a wholesale rezoning code amendment, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, that we see here. Um, what you'll notice in, uh, tonight is uh, in your packet is um, that the proposal, um, or the, the, that the, the changes that are, are requested um, provide for a definition of a motor vehicle ter uh, terminal. And again, you'll see in the extra information that I provided at your place tonight, um, and which is passed out to the petitioner, uh, and, and it's titled Revised Recommendations. Um, 
There's an additional definition that's added to Article 3, which provides for motor vehicle ter uh, terminal. And basically what this does is allow for storage of uh, vehicles or similar type of equipment, um, including trailers on this property. And then what this does then is it builds upon itself that then uh, we add as a special use under sec Article 16, Section 16.3, um, motor vehicle terminal yard or facilities that allow for, for instance, the storage of trucks and trailers and other motor vehicles subject to a series of use conditions that are set forth um, on page two of that report. Um, so um, as you can see here, what it does is it lays out how uh, the proposed use may be uh, uh, allowed on the property along with a series of conditions that kind of go along with um, that that help to uh, structure and focus the use on this property to um, uses that I think are probably appropriate for uh, what exists in the surrounding land uses uh, adjacent to the site. Um, item three then would be the consideration of the special use permit to actually allow for the, the vehicle terminal to be located on the property. Um, and again, subject to the use conditions that are in your packet. And then the fourth is the preliminary and final site and landscaping approvals, which the petitioner will touch upon as, as, as they move through the, the discussion. Um, I would note that in your packet, there are a series of, of uh, comments that were raised by the HOA um, that have been forwarded onto the petitioner. Um, these ranged from some questions about um, the number of trucks on, on the property, which direction the, the gate, uh, gates uh, swing, um, to uh, some building maintenance and questions along with um, some additional requests for landscaping, changes in the landscaping, expansion of the fences, um, and the like. And again, the petitioner will be prepared to address those uh, um, comments um, in your, uh, through their testimony. Um, so I, I guess with that, I'll, I'll try, I can answer any questions that you may have. It, at this point, it probably would be worthwhile to have the petitioner and, or his or their team uh, review the, the plans, and then we can begin the discussion. Okay. Okay. Who wants to speak? Uh, David Shank for the uh, petitioner uh, uh, seller for the change of uh, zoning and for the special use change. And uh, what, I'd, what I'd like to do, and, and we've actually been functioning as a team, buyer and seller, to put this together with uh, the great help of uh, John and, and village staff. So we're, we're grateful for, to have the opportunity for you to consider this. And what I'd like to do then is just is turn it over to Todd Schaefer, who's been our engineer, who, who has uh, done uh, a great job in putting in helping us uh, put this together and uh, respond really to the requests and suggestions uh, of the village and the HOA. So I turn it over to Todd to take you through what's being planned here. Good evening, everybody. Again, my name is Todd Schaefer. I'm a principal with Hager Engineering. Um, I just want to walk you through the proposal. Um, you guys are all familiar with the location north of the, the railroad on the west side of Butterfield Road. Currently, the site is, is unoccupied and there is access on the southern portion of the property as well as the northern portion of the property. And when it was fully operational, a lot of buses coming in and out. Um, the proposed truck use is, is a very low and in traffic intensive use. Trucks are, um, if trucks are here, they're not making money. So trucks are on the road uh, frequently. Um, the majority of the trucks on the weekends would get here so they can they can prepare to make their long trips, uh, maintain the vehicles on the weekend, et cetera. Um, the site is going to be consistent uh, with what's here now, except there's going to be a lot of improvements to the frontage along Butterfield Road. While working through the process with the village and reaching out to Lake County Department of Transportation, which is the owner of Butterfield Road, um, it was brought to the attention that this property is one of the few properties on Butterfield Road that has a 40-foot right-of-way across the frontage instead of the required 60 feet. So as one of the conditions of the um, access permit from Lake County DOT, there needs to be a 20-foot right-of-way dedication along Butterfield Road. 
So when we originally submitted to the village, um, that right away dedication was not known and we went through a couple of site plan iterations to then come into what you now see up in front of you is the proposal that's there. The proposal is to have trucks and vehicles enter the south entrance and circulate in a clockwise direction and come out to Butterfield Road on the north. Uh, the trucks would come in. There is two parking spaces in the front. Um, this will be a gated access and there'll be a keypad that's in the southwest corner outside of the gate. Um, that's, that'll also be where the Knox box is for the fire department. But when the trucks come in, they put their card in, uh, swipe it or their code, gate opens, the gate actually slides from south to north, and the trucks come in. Um, the two parking spaces in the front are for either guests that come in, handicap stalls, um, somebody making a quick delivery where they um, do what they need to do, and also to provide an area of refuse to get out of the way if a truck is behind them. Uh, once the cars are in here, um, the building itself is going to remain in its current configuration. Um, there is a future phase two expansion that will potentially occur at a later date. Um, right now, it's just a placeholder to, to show that it, it could basically mirror the footprint of the warehouse that's out there now. Um, that, if that ever were to proceed, would require building permit process with the village. Once the trucks come in, there's parking spaces in the front for the employees, workers, etc. cetera. Um, trucks would come in, they would back up their trailers, park at an angle, and then they would disconnect and the cabs would park here and here and here. There's 32 spaces for proposed cabs and then there are 34 spaces for various trailers. Um, once the trucks are in, they can then continue to circulate, come out here, there's going to be automatic gate that would open. Again, this gate slides from south to north as well, and then they proceed back onto Butterfield Road. We would anticipate the majority of the traffic leaving the site, going south on Butterfield Road to get to the, get to the highway. Um, other things about the site that, are, that uh, we want to point out is um, the improvements that we're doing to the frontage of the property. Um, some of the things working through the village, there's a couple of, uh, with the landscape architect will talk in more detail, but there's, there's some green ash that are up front that we're removing just because of the invasive species. We are adding more green area along the frontage um, to improve, add some more landscaping. Um, in addition, we're proposing a monument sign, which is located on the north side of the south entrance. One of the unique things about this sign is that we're it's being set 21 feet off of the current right-of-way, which would in turn be one foot off of the proposed right-of-way. Setting that sign back um, an additional nine feet, it, it would not be worth having a sign um, because it would be so far off the frontage. All of the other signs along Butterfield Road are actually placed much closer um, inside the dedicated right-of-way. So that's one of the, the variances that are being sought, and the reason for that is um, that we would be outside of the proposed right-of-way for that sign. Um, right now, there are no plans for Butterfield Road to be widened. They're just doing their planning, and in the event that it is widened, it's already a five-lane cross-section. So, um, Other things about the, the frontage is the existing site currently has a um, chain-link fence with barbed wire on the top, and there are the slats along Butterfield Road that can seal the yard in the back. One of the proposals as, as part of this submittal is that there's going to be an installation of an eight-foot um, commercial-grade PVC fence placed across Butterfield Road along the frontage. Um, the gates themselves are going to be maintained as chain link with slats to match the color of the proposed PVC fence um, because of the weight and also the mechanicals of the sliding gate itself. The, the eight foot fence is going to extend from the south property line to the building. Right now the proposal is there's a, there's a small wooden shed on the south side of the building that's going to be removed and the fence butts up against that. The fence is set back enough where a truck can be completely within the property, including the right of way dedication, so that the, the back end of the truck does not hang into the Butterfield Road. Um, as you go north, we're going to be um, having the fence butt up against the north wall of the building. It's going to run to the north property line. Once you get to the north property line, we're angling the fence so that the fence is outside of the proposed right-of-way so that if Lake County does ever widen it, we don't have to deal with changing, removing, relocating the fence. Uh, the proposal is to 
uh, as submitted on your drawings is to, to wrap the fence down 15 feet. Uh, one of the comments from the homeowners association was to extend that fence. Um, I believe the number was 120 feet. What we're proposing to address that comment is to extend the fence to the eastern wall of the self storage building that's immediately north of us. So that would be, um, let me zoom in here. Right now we had a 15 foot um, turnaround, uh, extending it another 65 feet, which would take us to that east wall of the, the building to the north of it. The combination of that plus the screen, the berming that's here and the berming that's over there, um, we feel that that's adequate. Going in, going another, um, going to the 120 feet would put it back in this area. Um, so our proposal to, to address the association's comment is to extend it to the east wall of the, the building to the north. Um, from the standpoint, the other item that's in the inside of the site is there's a fuel storage tank as well as a fuel pump that was used by the buses. Um, the proposal is to remove those. Um, those would be permitted uh, through the permitting process with the village and the IEPA and the other governmental agencies that are required to uh, obtain approvals. Um, for the most part, the parking lot's going to maintain and it, the pavement's in pretty good shape. Um, the proposal is to seal coat and restripe the lot in the configuration that you see on the proposed site plan. Um, there is a, on the southwest corner of the site, there is a, uh, a low area where dirt has accumulated and that's because the drainage just over time has been blocked by the debris on the bottom of the fence. The natural drainage is from east to west where it would go down the south property line and into a wetland area, stormwater management area further to the west. We've had conversations with the village engineer as well as the village of Mundelein and um, we don't anticipate any problems with coming in here to, to, in essence, take a shovel, clean up some of the debris, clean up some of the branches to let that water flow. Um, so from the standpoint of the parking lot and the frontage, uh, we have to widen the southern apron so that the southbound trucks can make the turn into the site. Once the trucks make into the turn, everything has been designed so that the trucks can, can free flow through the site without um, interfering with some of the parked vehicles. The concrete pads that are currently out there are proposing to remain. Um, the site will be striped. Wheel stops will be proposed as we show on the site plan. Currently there is a um, storage trailer similar to, I would call it a pod, like you would have for residential. Um, it's basically a trailer without wheels that's currently in the northeast corner of the site. That's being relocated to the back end of the, the property so that we can put some landscaping along the frontage. Um, and from a standpoint of traffic control, stop sign control um, at Butterfield Road, cars come in, cars go out. Um, and with that, I'm here for any questions on the site plan and circulation, and I'll turn it over to Carl Crokestad. It is one way, clockwise direction. Um, with regards to the fence on the north property line, is it your intention to maintain or the trees along that will remain as long as they're not ash trees? Correct. Right now, the only two ash trees that are on the site are the two that we're removing. Right. There is the landscaping that's actually north of the fence is not our property. It's the mm -hmm. village of Mundelein. Okay. Um, so we want to pose if they ever want to clean it up, but we don't have any jurisdiction for those Understood. trees that are there. Okay. Thanks. What do you want? So you got the existing here. Okay. And then your is right here. Okay. Existing is this one? Yeah, just click on that. Okay. Again, my name is Carl Krogstead. I'm president of uh, Krogstead Land Design Limited with offices in Crystal Lake, Illinois. And uh, I was retained as um, I'm both an arborist and a uh, registered landscape architect and uh, was retained to um, do the initial inventory of the plant material as well as the landscape design. And this uh, first sheet, I'll just briefly go over that, is uh, um, it indicates the what was there existing. Um, a couple of things that uh, stand out. There were um, a couple of, of uh, good size uh, trees um, that uh, did impact the site. However, um, being green ash, this largest one was a green ash, and there was another one over here. Um, I don't recall if now they do have the borer, um, but I'm sure they will very uh, shortly, even maybe since I did the inventory. And so we're recommending those come out right away. 
um, because that will be an issue very soon if it isn't already. Um, the other th areas, uh, we had some things that were located within the right-of-way dedication, um, particularly in a sign located here. Uh, a lot of the material, um, although at one time I think was uh, probably uh, vigorous and healthy um, because of the, time, the couple years that it's been sitting there and including the fact that we had a terrible drought last year, um, it was not in very good shape. Um, these, uh, some of the asters and other plantings in here, um, we had some overgrown mugo pines in the area. And so the first thing I looked at was um, what makes sense to keep and what makes sense um, to take out and uh, proceeded with that and, and this indicates what's being removed and what isn't. Um, the second thing that I did actually at that same visit was to go over to um, the, uh, the residents across the street and actually took a lot of pictures from those homes to see what their view was from different angles. Um, as was mentioned here earlier, um, they do have a fairly good um, screening along the back of their, um, their that berm and that uh, scenic easement there. Uh, but we did want to make sure that you know, where there were gaps, where people's homes, windows faced there to take those views into consideration. So I kind of stood there and took pictures and used that um, when putting together the design. Um, as uh, this shows um, in the upper left uh, corner of uh, this exhibit, just shows the overall site. And because of the nature of the surrounding uses, um, the nature of the type of use, um, it didn't make any sense to put any landscaping on the south, um, west, or north sides. Um, we want to keep it as clear as possible for truck maneuverings, plus those are uh, similar uses. So all of the landscaping is, contra is uh, concentrated on the front. And I kind of broke it down into three blow-ups that uh, you can see, and I'll refer to each one. The furthest north, um, we proposed, again, where that current trailer is being removed, and then that area having two uh, larger trees that would eventually have, uh, uh, those would be maples, very hardy. I do want to mention that all the material that uh, is being proposed here are, is hardy material that uh, uh, will withstand different uh, um, you know, droughts or periods of, uh, of uh, cold, um, trying to use the most hardy we can because again um, even though there will be people here and able to maintain it um, they're in the trucking business and we want to keep it uh, you know so that they're they, it'll look good with, with a minimal amount of uh, uh, required maintenance uh, in that same upper corner we um, the fence that was described will do a lot of the screening uh, primarily the screening for the um, the trucks and then some of these trees will give a little bit higher screening. But we wanted to do landscaping in front of that um, fence in order to soften it. I mean, it is going to be a little bit of a decorative fence being a, uh, you know, Buff Tech, a little bit an upgrade from a normal uh, you know, cyclone or um, um, uh, chain link fence. Uh, even so, it, uh, we wanted to do some things just to soften it and break it up. Um, I did use both a combination of some evergreen with uh, arborvitae as well as a couple of different types of uh, hardy um, ground covers um, or, or small shrubs, I mean, excuse me, and uh, then continued that to wrap around the front of the building. Again, getting rid of some of the big perennial beds that require more maintenance and weeding, um, just putting in some perennials in the areas in front of the sign where it wouldn't block the signage itself, um, but give some color on the front, some ornamental grasses that are nice, both in the, you know, during the year and also um, at the time of, in the winter, they have a nice look to them as well. Um, so that was the basic uh, concept here. I kept some of the larger um, um, white pine that are located here, um, kept a cherry that's located here that's in fairly good shape. Um, and then again, try to get a variety of color for different seasons. On the, the southernmost part, there's an island that's just on the inside of the fence. Um, and there, I showed a couple of uh, Douglas fir, which are plant evergreen and also um, contain, uh, um, are narrow enough that they would uh, not interfere with truck uh, maneuvering. Um, I do want to now go through a list of uh, comments that we received uh, 
Um, the assistant manager did mention that we received this uh, letter, and I do want to go point by point to just uh, with our response to that. And um, just also want to mention that we have been working all along, and I maybe not directly have met with the homeowners, but I've get, been given feedback from the very beginning on this, and we've been trying to, you know, certainly take into consideration um, their concerns and um, trying to make this the best looking uh, frontage that we can, but again, keeping it hardy. Um, and so that was the, the idea behind all this um, design. Now the first question, uh, number A, was uh, they would like, instead of daylilies, knockout roses, um, I have no problem with that. They're both hardy. Um, it's just a matter of choice, um, and you know we can go ahead and make that if they prefer. Um, there was a question about the arborvitae being salt tolerant, and it is true that if the arborvitae are too close to the road, there there could be some issues. But I believe the distance that we're talking about here, um, and it's, we can see it at the property directly to the south. Um, they're doing fine just to the south of here. I believe that the distance is far enough that. Um, we shouldn't have any uh, problem with the salt spray. And I, it's good to have a narrow plant there that, again, doesn't um, get uh, overgrown um, with time. Um, there was a question, number C was about the material at the, uh, um, the exit, and that's, we're talking about this detail right here. Um, there, we were showing gravel under the fence. Um, I have two uh, reasons for going with that, and I would like to stick with the gravel. First of all, it's not going to be seen that much. Um, you really won't notice it as you're driving down Butterfield, and I don't believe that because of the planting that's in front of it. Um, and uh, you know, just, it's just not going to be that visible, and I think it is the best material for that. So that and I'm talking about a little bit larger cobbles, not you know, tiny stones, so that it doesn't get into the. Uh, um, I'm sorry, what? How wide will that strip be? Um, it's about, I think, like four feet. Is that three to four feet? Three to four feet, yeah. And uh, but the fence will be right over. It. It's also so that the gate can open. Sure. Yeah. So we don't want anything to interfere. So ground cover really couldn't be used. Um, and um, I think that. It, so I would like to, to continue to use that. And I really don't think it'll be noticeable um, from anyone except for those who are parking their trucks there. Um, the next one. Uh, Detail three, um, Douglas fir, they would prefer to see Colorado spruce. I don't have a, a problem with that. I, I like to mix up the species as much as possible. I know there's a lot of spruce across the street. And in the event that anything comes through, like the emerald ash borer, I always like to mix it up. But I, you know, it's not going to have a big impact. So we have no problem switching those. Um, the warranty that would be um, anticipated and what we're planning um, with the contract typically within the industry is a one-year um, warranty. And um, unless I believe that uh, that is sufficient. Um, the majority of the plants will, um, if they're going to make it through the first year, they'll make it, um, barring any, uh, you know, things like a, a terrible drought. And in that case, like we had last year, the people would, um, there are people on site who would be able to water maintain it. So a one-year warranty is what we're uh, looking at with that. Um, and then the overseeding, um, we are not uh, anticipating, we're not uh, planning to put in an irrigation system. Again, um, there, whoever the contractor is will warranty that for the first year, but um, beyond that, there will be someone on site um, who can put up sprinklers. Once it gets established, that seeding will, um, will take, and it should, normal rainfall in a normal circumstance, should take care of it. Initially, I, I personally see so much, I see more plants die because of irrigation. I'm not, I'm also a lead AP, and I've done a lot of the drought tolerant material. I like to use plants, and we'll probably specify a seed mix that's more of a roadway, an IDOT type seed mix here. That's more hardy, um, and normal rainfall should take care of that. Um, with that, um, those are you know the majority of the questions. Again, I'll be here for, any other questions that uh, anyone may have? Um, and I'll uh, turn it over to <laughs> somebody. Um, at this point, um, there's, uh, uh, I'd like to ask the uh, uh, 
uh, petitioner for the special use permit to uh, just talk about a couple of things that have come up. Uh, one is uh, the question of uh, hours that the facility will be used by the trucking company. So, Yulia, if you would uh, present that. Hello, once again, my name is Yulia Kisluk, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Truck Repair and Parking Limited Liability Company. I think we've met about a year ago, and uh, we were here as a random trucking company, and ever since last year we've grown. Uh, we acquired um, Victoria and Yuri Petrenko. They've been in business for about 10 years. They have their own trucking company, which is located in Buffalo Grove. And what's going to happen is they are going to move into the same location, and we should not um, be having more than 32 trucks um, in that area. Um, like I said, Yuri and Victoria have been in business for about uh, 10 years now. They are pretty much doing the same thing as uh, Random used to do. Uh, Rasa and Marius are present here as well, so um, you will have an opportunity to, to talk to them as well if you're interested. Um, I guess um, just to add uh, to whatever we already heard, uh, there were a few things that we wanted to uh, discuss. I believe that one of the things that was brought up is the tank um, that's uh, located in that um, property. Uh, it was not used, and we do not intend to use it, and it will be removed. Um, that's one of the things that we are planning on doing. Um, we are planning on expanding in the future. Um, we will definitely get a permit, of course, to do that, to proceed with that. Um, with the with the sign, um, just like Ted uh, mentioned, we will have a sign, and it will comply with the local ordinance. Uh, we will uh, do whatever we need to do uh, to make sure we are law-abiding citizens. Uh, there, we do not have any plants uh, changing lighting. So whatever is there right now, and if it's not bothering any residents or anybody else, this is what, what we intend to keep. We do not intend on adding any additional lighting. Um, there's going to be an additional lighting at the front of the uh, door of the building, but that's about it. Um, uh, the, uh, um, there were some issues about trash. We have no uh, desire or intent to um, build anything or to keep trash outside of the actual building that's already there. It will be inside of the building. Um, also, um, um, let's see. Some of the improvements uh, to the exterior um, of the building, the uh, brick tort uh, tuck point will be repaired. The building will be painted. Um, the, uh, the new partner that joined us uh, most likely will be consolidating into one company and we will not be keeping two locations. Um, hours of operation, um, something that was brought up as well. We intend to operate anywhere from 7 o'clock in the morning, that's when everybody arrives, and then about 7 15, 7.30 is when everybody will begin uh, the day, and we'll be, um, uh, and I'm talking about maintenance, like if something needs to be uh, fixed. So 7.30 to about 6 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And Saturday, Sunday is, um, we understand there is a, uh, an issue with uh, us being open on, on the weekend, especially <coughs> Sunday, but this is when the trucks are parked, that's when the drivers are home, and that's when um, my clients will have an opportunity to work on those trucks and to fix them. Everything will be done indoors, of course. And hours of operation when the trucks are coming in and coming out is anywhere from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, I um, think pretty much covered everything, so of course if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Anyone else?
Nothing? I do have some questions. Are we ready for that? Okay, sure. Just a few questions. I notice in your diagram you show box trucks, um, the trailers. I'm assuming, are you going to have tankers at all? The semis? No. They're, they're, these are long-haul trucks. Okay, they're all long-haul box trucks. Okay, because it, it, I noticed it, it, it did say that they may have uh, freight in them or they may be empty. Correct. Okay, and, and is there some type of security that you have? I, I see the trucks are backed into their parking spaces, which would make it difficult to open the doors, but is there some type of security to ensure that uh, either vandalism or trying to break in into the trucks? No, you have to speak from the microphone. Um, Victoria. Victoria Petranka, hi. First of all, we're very excited. <laughs> so, um, you know, what, the fact that the, truck, the trailer is actually back into the fence, pretty much you're absolutely right, security itself. Usually all the trailers uh, have, regardless of where they are, uh, there is a lock on the trailer. Right. Always. Now, further on, we, we were actually thinking maybe put, put some sort of security cameras and something. Generally speaking, that's enough. As a trucking company, I don't know if you're familiar, we do have a cargo insurance. We, I mean, stuff happens. Well, and, and, and my questions are more for the surrounding community, um, assuming you do have insu insurance. Exactly. It, it's very common in, when you see trucks parked that they're either backed straight up against a wall because or, they're the back, or they're parked back to back. And having come from the chemical industry, uh, you know, I'm aware of uh, shipping chemicals on box trucks like this. And obviously the trucks are placarded accordingly with whatever hazardous material may be inside. We don't hold material hazardous. No, your shippers may have. Uh, no, we don't have. A, uh, we don't have. Okay, uh, that's do what, I was just. You, you, we don't have. I mean, that's okay. I'm just. I'm just wondering. No, but I'm just saying we do not. Okay. Uh, we do not um, uh, have a license f to hold hazardous material. So all the materials that's going to be in the okay. truck, uh, we might, but we don't have it. Okay. We do not operate. It's, it's additional, actually, um, kind of uh, problem for us as well. So we don't have it. Okay. But the fact that again, the the, the trailers back to the to the to the fence. Pretty yeah, much. they're at an angle, and you're right, but some of them are at an angle, and, and you can have pretty creative uh, people trying to get into That's things. True. And That's true. That's so true. It, it well, we live in a very <laughs> nothing's good Nothing's foolproof, but you never know. <laughs> true that. Yeah. True that. But, I mean, again, we're not, we're not, and always there is usually locks okay. for a lot of different reasons, for our own protection, cargo, and, and the, for, the, for the safety of the neighborhood and, and the community. Right. Right. Okay. Um, do you know the condition of the underground fuel storage tanks? I'm just, I'm just wondering why you would remove them. You know them. what, I do not, but I'm sure it's stuck here. Okay. Um, phase one was done already. Uh, phase one of environmental, and it was all negative. Everything is fine. We're going to be doing phase two within the next couple of weeks. And whatever happens, uh, we are working with the bank because we cannot close unless we take care of phase two. So it's definitely under control. And... Uh, this tank was not used, and when um, first student was leaving the area, I believe they have done some things that were required, correct, David? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. When, uh, when, when about first, the tank. When first student uh, uh, stopped actually running buses out of there, they've stored some buses, they've done some planning, but stopped using uh, the, the uh, storage tank, they did, they have a protocol for, for, clo for temporarily closing the tank. Didn't know if it would, it would a end up being reactivated, but they went through and did their own review, and, and we uh, provided buyers with reports that showed there was no problem with the tank. Correct. And it's really a business decision uh, by the buyers uh, to remove the tank uh, if, and, and, and um, what, what they've talked about is the fact that they want to do an expansion at some point, and that expansion would then be over the storage tank. Okay. So it makes sense, and and when they, when they do some, uh, um, uh, do you know whether it's cosmetic or otherwise to the building, and um, and then get into the expansion. At that point, it'll make sense to pull it out. Okay. And then with the uh, exterior maintenance of the existing buildings, you mentioned that you'd be doing tuck pointing and painting. Correct. Is that um, We're not for the painting, are you going to paint it the same color, the current colors? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <coughs> what is the, um, 
we talked about the fence along the front and some of the side. What is the existing along your property lines right yeah. now, or what are you proposing? Current, currently, the fence out there is along the frontage of the property is, it's chain link fence around the entire property, except where the building is. Okay. Along the f frontage of the property, the fence has the, the, the vinyl slats in it at an angle to, uh, some of it's deteriorated. Um, so as, as one of the things that they're proposing is, is to remove the fence completely along the frontage, one for the landscaping, but also two to replace it with the eight foot uh, a commercial grade PVC solid wall fence. Um, with the gates would be the chain link fence material with the slats color to match the adjacent um, eight foot high PVC fence. Along the north, west, and south property line, the existing fence has a barbed wire on the top. Some of the fences in need of repair, some of the posts are falling down. So along the southwest and north, the fence will be repaired as required. The barbed wire will be removed completely and uh, it will remain in place. How tall is it? The existing fence right now is six to eight feet tall, depending if you count the barbed wire or not. So you're, and you're gonna have a six to eight foot chain link fence around the property that does not have slats in it, correct? Correct. I is there lighting within uh, the, yard. the yard to the point that A six foot chain link fence is not gonna stop somebody from trying to break into those trucks. I don't, I don't mean to harp on that. Right now, from what we understand is you have the self storage facility over on the west. We're not aware of any problems of yeah. people going over the fence to the self storage facility. This whole area is storage for RVs, buses, et cetera. And then you have the self storage area here. Plus this property is also feet higher than our, our property here. From the standpoint of the, the site lighting that's out there, um, it was adequate for the bus terminal that was here. Um, also, the residents across the street did not want any additional lights. Um, there is lighting on the building that will be maintained. At this point in time, the, the owner or the buyers are not, are not concerned about, about the safety. Um, if at some point in time, safety becomes an issue or security, they're gonna protect their property and their, their assets. If they need to do security system, um, they can do that. Um, if they do any changes to the lighting, that would have to go through the village process to do there. Um, again, one of the main concerns is is not providing any more light to uh, um, disrupt the homeowners on the other side of the street. The only there are two light poles. I just wanted to correct one of the previous testimonies. Is there are two wooden light poles that are along the frontage of the property. Those are being removed, um, and there was a reference to a, a light being placed at the front door just for. By removing those two poles, we just want to have some illumination, similar to a coach light on a house at a front door, just to provide some light at that front door. Well, you don't have to. I'm comfortable. I think it looks great. <laughs> I, one more. I, had, I had a question for John, real quick. Mm -hmm. For the, um, John, for the variance on the fence mm -hmm. going from um, being the principal, being this equal to the principal height of the principal structure. Right. Um, so this is a little bit lower than that. Right. And on this property, I'm assuming the principal structure is actually the building behind the, the metal building. I, I can see how it's the variance is being generated. Yeah, uh, you're you're right. Um, but yet it was one of those things where the eight foot seemed to be a reasonable uh, approach to this because once you get taller than that, then you're talking about structural. Right walls and those types of things and so that's you're correct okay do we know how 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 tall is the brick office building to the front uh, the um vestibule area is nine foot tall the brick building the front brick building is 12 feet above grade and the shed or, or the maintenance area in the back is 15 to 16 feet okay to the peak and it's 20 feet at the peak of the gable so the, the roof slopes, as you can see here, a gable here is 19.7 feet above finished floor, and then it slopes down to just over 15 foot above finished floor. Okay. So the fence you're providing is more than half on the front, 
and yeah, almost it's eight foot tall versus the 12 foot um, tall main ma masonry frontage where the offices and stuff are located. And, I think. and it's you want to point out that large evergreen or several evergreens there right in front there. The I mean, I'll go to the the existing ones. Yeah. Yeah. So. A lot of the trees along the building, they're, they're, we've got the three Austrian pines. The, this green ash is being removed. Um, but from the standpoint of, and, and this, this black cherry at 10 inches is going to be staying as well. Um, one of the focus points of, of some of the landscaping was to provide the layering, in, in addition to the berming that's on the east side of Butterfield Road, but also to have the, the fence cover the, the low screening when you're driving down the road that you, your eyes don't visually go there. But then the trees above it with the arborvitae and stuff in the middle to help get that layering effect to screen the, the parking lot. Did you say that it's hard to talk about the south uh, gate being a sliding fence? Is the north the same? Mm -hmm. Yes, right now, so the, the keypad um, with the bollards and the Knox box will be located here. The gate, the mechanical part of the gate for the slide will go here, and this, the gate slides to the north. So there needed to be room for that whole gate to slide and open in its entirety there. And how about on the north? On the north, it's, it's a similar, similar situation where the gate, right before the bend point of the fence, the gate can slide open in, in its entirety. And is that activated the same way, or is that just by the No, when you leave, it's loop detectors. Loop detectors in the pavement, sensors. I have some questions about operation, and I guess I'm a little unclear now. You gave us the hours of operation you're proposing for the maintenance, but what about for the usage as a terminal? 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. So it's not a 24-hour operation in terms of trucks coming and going? Um, can we have um, Mario to comment on that? It's possible. Oh, I'm sorry, Mario, we're going to. It's possible here. It's in the emergency situation. Is a truck is can came at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. But it's not usually. It's sometimes it's happened. Okay. For purposes then, if it would be operated outside of this basic kind of normal business day operation, and this is I guess for you, Todd, what kind of noise do these gates generate? Now I know in a perfect world they're absolutely silent. You're going to tell me, but what's the reality of what these generate? The gates. The gates. The what's the noise? The gates. I mean, if, if you're one of the residences across the street, whatever this distance is, and these gates start opening and closing at 2 in the morning, what's the noise that we're going to hear? The gates, the, the noise that the gates ma make are based on the, the maintenance of the wheels and stuff that Fair slide enough. across the pavement. Um, the, the mechanical equipment itself that controls the gates are enclosed. Okay. Um, it, it, so it's your normal sliding gate. I don't know. Uh, I, the, Noise levels will not exceed village code. I, that I can make a definitive statement, but if you're asking, have a beep associated there's no beeping associated with it. There's nothing. One of the things about the trucks is, is we have a, we have a, we have a, the clockwise operation for um, the, the, when the trucks come in, as Marius was saying, is, is it's, when you have long haul trucking, there's a, on occasion you're going to have a truck that sure. gets, gets done early or gets okay. done in the off hours and they come in to, to do their. Um, but they're going to have to back up than to put their trailer in one of these spaces. Or are you telling me that if it's on an off hour, they're not going to back up, so we're not going to have a backup alarm issue? No, those uh, semi-trucks is a long distance and not uh, uh, equipment with a backup beep. Oh, they don't? They don't. That's as long as only straight trucks. OK. Is, it, is this contemplated to be, for lack of a better way to put it, like the, the home base for these particular truckers? So this is where they'll kind of leave from to go and do whatever they do, then come back when they come home? Correct. OK, then what I'm curious about is that you've got parking for 32 cabs on this site, but you only have parking for <clears throat> behind the fence. It looks like 18 plus one handicap space. So how can you accommodate the driver coming with his car dropping it off, picking up his truck, and leaving over enough parking spaces? The, the trucks the, will park in the available spaces, and then the trucks will leave, and they, they park their cars where the cabs are parked. Park their car. 
okay, then, then what are all these parking spaces for other than you're just saying because these, these parking spaces are a requirement per code from the standpoint of the office space in the building if we have a mechanic in the building so that the parking number of parking spaces is being proposed okay. based on the code. But um, when people come in, it, it's going to be the driver's choice and how they do their operations of uh, the intent is they park their car where their cab is located. That's an excellent point. So it, they leave their car, they pull the cab out, and they get back in their car, they put the car back they, in the space. They, they come in. back in the cab. Oh, boy, this sounds like an awfully complex. No, I mean, if, if there's a vacant spot, they, they another car can park there. Sure, fair enough. Um, but if, if they're the first ones in and there is all the cars are parked, they will park their car in, in an area that's out of the way and back their truck up, hook up their, to their load, and move their car. Okay. Okay. Um, many of us that drive in this area of the county notice that there are quite often on basically larger roads that have heavy truck traffic than adjacent residences, there are prohibitions against excessive engine braking. And quite candidly, I don't know, because this is a county road, where that comes from, but I'm assuming that if that is something that the county would be amenable to on this portion of the roadway. That's not a problem for you guys. So all drivers know is uh, almost all cities is uh, prohibited at uh, engine brake use. So it's uh, almost drivers. Is that our ordinance? I don't know. Okay. I'd have to check. <laughs> okay. So and if not, we could in enact something, I'm sure. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Now, one other thing in terms of operation, uh, you indicated there's this pod type storage, but let's take it a step further. Are you going to do any, in terms of coming and going, any intermodal type container truck storage? Are we going to see intermodal containers here? Uh, no, we use we're not using uh, reefers. We're using only uh, dry vent. Okay. And we're working. Uh, both our companies is working for ten years with only with a dry reefer. Because uh, let me dry, be dry, dry vent, sorry. Fair enough. So, but let me be brutally candid. Why I ask that? Um, my concern with that is when you start dealing with that type of product, if you will, or service, they're routinely stacked 60, 70 feet high. And I, I certainly don't want to see that. Okay, but that's not a problem. Um, I understand from talking to Mr. Calmer, but I'll ask you specifically, are you doing anything to the surface of the yard other than restriping it? Right now, the, we've, we've done a pavement walkthrough. That's um, been the question. And the there's been, if you look at the, the, the aerial, there's been patching that's occurred. Uh -huh. The property has been well maintained from the standpoint of the pavement. Um, there, there is very little alligator cracking that's out there. Um, so right now, in, in order to reach, the, the striping is very faint. Um, so a lot of times you, you have to black out the paint before you seal coat it. But in this case, just seal coating, doing your normal crack sealing. Um, and then over time, um, with the, with the pavement, you're going to be having different loads on aisles that currently aren't aisles right now. So over time, the property's going to have to be maintained in accordance with the village code. Is, and I don't know the relative weight differences, especially if you have loaded trailers. Is this, I'm going to use the word engineer, but that might be the wrong word since this has been here so long. Is this yard engineered for the weights of loaded trailers? The answer to that question is I do not know because the, the fun, it's been functioning as a bus terminal. Right. We haven't done a pavement analysis from the standpoint of pavement cores, mm -hmm. um, but from a visual inspection where the buses are have been going back and forth, the, the pavement's in good shape. So we didn't see a need to, we don't want to go through and do a pavement overlay. If, if over time the pavement starts to deteriorate in areas, they're going to come in and grind and resurface and and put it into an area that is more susceptible, more a thicker course of pavement. Um, but as of right now, there, there's no plans for the pavement. I don't, there's no there's no engineering reasons to fix something that's not broke right now. No, I understand. Okay. okay. If we can go back to the uh, the operational hours, you are, if I'm correct, so we know what you're asking for. You're asking for an additional, other than the 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. during Monday through Fridays. You're looking for Saturday and Sunday hours of 8 to 5 and 10 to 3 for maintenance. Correct. Okay. But you're not looking or you're not, that's really said incorrectly. 
part of this request does not have any sort of prohibition on the hours of operation of the actual terminal itself the comings and going as marius mentioned these trucks come and go um very rarely you're going to have someone come in on sunday usually they come in towards the end of the week but not on sunday so we don't expect um hours of operation being extended towards sunday the only thing that well one of one of few things that our um uh, Marius will be looking for and his uh, partners is to be able to fix trucks on sure, Sunday. I understand. Uh, I, I guess what my concern is that with respect to the operation of the terminal portion, not the maintenance portion, okay. I understand that between weather and timing and traffic, you can't always say that someone's going to get there by 7, they might get there right. by 8 or 10. And the occasional issue when that occurs doesn't really concern me all that much. But I don't know when occasional becomes something more and becomes periodic or normal business that this becomes a you know a 24 7 operation like you have in you know we, we can ask right. him how it's been for the last 10 years for him and for uh, petrenko business okay. um, so based on your experience when we're looking at weekends sundays or saturdays how often do you have uh, your drivers come in into we're, this area where you park trucks versus monday through friday how would you compare it they usually drivers, they normally people, they at night they sleeping also. Mm -hmm. So they coming back they at uh, Friday, let's say about uh, six, seven uh, early. Yeah, they, long distance dry, drivers, they try to avoid the traffic, sure. traffic time, rush hours. So they coming, uh, they counting the time. So sometimes it can be uh, came at eight, nine, nine p.m. But what I'm asking really is what sort of frequency of arrivals and departures of the, the vehicles occurs outside of this general 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday? Are we looking at, on average, there's, you know, it's going to happen twice a week, there'll be someone there at 11 o'clock, or are you going to tell me that, no, it's pretty much a nightly thing and it could be, you know, 3 a.m., we could have five trucks? Putting aside the real unusual weather conditions that we can't figure. Those on the um, uh, days on uh, Monday, Friday, uh, those more busy days, Monday and Friday. What on the middle of the week, uh, so I, let's, I can say about maybe five trucks per, per day. Would be outside of the 6 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Oh, no. Be coming in after 7 p.m.? He's no. asking no. anything right. outside of 7 p.m. Right. Later, um, after 7 p.m.? No. In the middle of the week, uh, almost no. Friday? What about Friday? Friday is possible. But how many? How many? What kind of frequency? How many trucks after 7 p.m. on Friday? Approximately. Right. right. About maybe 7, maybe 10. Every week? Each Friday. Okay. Is, and is this at all going to be a transfer facility, or is it all going to be kind of the, the, the terminus and then for short-term storage? Yes, it's only the terminal. So you're not doing any transfer? No. Anybody else? Just a quick comment on a couple of questions you had. Being the proud owner of many of these uh, electronic gates that go back and forth, I can tell you that they're all very quiet. The loudest noise on the ones we own are the beepers to let people know that they're either opening or closing. If they don't have the beepers, nobody's going to hear them. I'm going to tell you right now, they're, they're very quiet. Uh, secondly, engine braking noise. Uh, traditionally, it's from a high speed coming down to a lower speed. Speed limit on Butterfield right there, I think, is what, 40? 40, yep. And that's if they even get to 40. Coming from 60, they'll have a hard time even getting to that with the railroad tracks and everything. Coming from the north with the signals, you're going to have a hard time even getting them up to speed enough that even they would even use engine braking. So I don't think that is, I don't even think that's going to be an issue with that. So. Anybody else? And I, I feel that this is a big improvement to what is there. So I just want to commend the team. Thank you. Okay, do I add anything at this point? I believe that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, the parking that's indicated um, along the southern part of the property to meet the code requirement, 
Does that also anticipate a future expansion of the building or additional parking needed for that? Um, there are some, let me look at the parking account here. Um, there are 19 required, 22 provided. Okay. Um, with the future building expansion, it depends on what they use it for. So for example, if it were to be a warehouse area where they're just maintaining the trucks and moving over, the only parking requirement is the additional number of employees. If they were to convert it to office space, that's a different, that's a different comment. And the, the parking would have to be adopted to reflect what they're proposing. So when the building expansion is proposed, right now it's a placeholder to say, there's a possibility of a building expansion. And, but what that building expansion is going to entail, the parking requirement would have to be met based on that building expansion or would they have to come before the village to ask for a variance? Okay. okay. Yep. And all the drivers using this facility will be employees of the, will be your employees. There won't be other truck drivers coming in for maintenance. Okay. He's asking, uh, um, and I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, so the question is, all your drivers that are driving your trucks, are they going to be your employees or they're going to be somebody else's? No, that's uh, our employees, my and uh, wife. Okay, so they're going to know I go in on the south and out on the north. There won't oh, be absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, might as well, go ahead. Uh, you uh, like to put a sign, there's a no idling, low speed limits, and there's a way, where is the entrance and where is the exit. And also, Marius uh, has frequent meetings with his drivers. They also communicate via text messages and uh, phone calls, of course. Right, to I let was them just know. wondering if there would be drivers coming to the facility who weren't familiar with No, it, no, they're only sounds like they all will employees. Be. Yeah. And I, I just have a clarification of Chairman Morris's question. He was asking about sea containers. None of these are reefers, right? No, it's not three things. Okay. All right. Okay, anything else? No. Okay. This is a public hearing, so at this point we would open the meeting up to any public comment anyone has. Uh, if you want to give public comment, we ask you come up, indicate who you are, and then let us hear your comments. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Don Kathan, president of the Greg's Landing North Homeowners Association. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the opportunity to work with the village, to work with the petitioner, we appreciate um, your thoughtfulness in listening to our input. Um, since our first meeting with the petitioner last year, um, I've uh, gathered input from a number of residents, including those that are uh, most uh, directly affected by virtue of their close proximity. And in short, residents are concerned. They're concerned uh, about a number of issues. They're concerned about overall aesthetics, noise, uh, diesel exhaust, um, the adverse effect or potential adverse effect to their property values. Uh, and they've asked me to come here tonight and express some of their uh, concerns and raise some of their questions. Since our initial meeting, uh, we've learned from the village uh, about the change in structure that is the consolidation uh, of ownership, uh, the combined owners, and as the petitioner stated tonight, consolidation of operations. Um, we feel that that has essentially modified this proposal from what it was at its earlier stages to now something significantly different. Uh, the concern is that by these two operations consolidating, that the original frequency of operations, number of trucks uh, coming and going, while the lot is limited, um, coming and going, the traffic, if you will, uh, certainly will increase with these consolidated operations. Um, residents are concerned, as I said, about the, the noise. Um, with respect to the, what I've heard tonight, for the request for the expanded hours of operation, uh, that is different from what we were originally uh, presented with. And um, um, I personally, and for the sake of the residents, 
would encourage you to decline that request for the expanded hours of operation. With respect to some of the landscaping and other issues, uh, particularly the fence on the north side, um, when you're coming down uh, southbound on Butterfield Road, uh, you will have the ability to see directly into that yard uh, if that fencing stops short of uh, what we think is reasonable uh, and a reasonable extension to the west. Uh, again, the desire is to, um, while everyone knows it's a trucking operation, um, in the future, uh, potential buyers for properties inside Greg's Landing who drive up and down Butterfield Road probably are not going to want to be able to peer directly into that yard and see what's there. They know what it is, they know what's there, but to the extent that visually it can be screened, I think that's a benefit to all. So we would encourage you uh, to require the extension of that north perimeter fence to the west to the uh, extent that uh, was originally uh, put forward by John Kalmar. Um, the landscaping, um, we've given some input with respect to what, uh, what we think would be some improvements, both in terms of uh, types, density, um, and we would encourage the village um, to make this uh, as aesthetically pleasing at the onset as possible. Um, with respect to things like the um, warranty, we all have experience most recently with the uh, commercial property on the east end of Greg's Landing, uh, particularly that which abuts Lowe's or is adjacent to Lowe's. Um, the experience was that um, we requested an extension from the one-year warranty to a five-year warranty for that landscaping and it turned out to be a very uh, important change because uh, some of that landscaping did not take uh, after the first year and did have to be replaced. Uh, we're concerned about the, um, the seed that will be uh, thrown down on the uh, um, frontage, the front lawn. Um, while they, it's been stated that there will be someone there on site who will be watering, um, I'm skeptical as to whether their uh, maintenance, landscape maintenance, will be sufficient to keep that area aesthetically pleasing, uh, to keep the, uh, the weeds out, to keep the, um, the grass and the shrubs hardy. Um, we don't want it to fall into um, disrepair uh, from the start or as soon as the plants are, are put in the ground because it was no one's full-time job. Um, while there may be a hose spigot out in front and there may be somebody in the building, that doesn't necessarily ensure that you'll have hardy plants around the uh, exterior of that building. So we think uh, the landscaping is very important, the uh, upgrades, if you will, uh, or the requests that we've made. We'd like to see those put forward. Um, a very important aspect has to do with the, as I said, the hours of operation. Um, with what we perceive to be the increased uh, traffic from the consolidation of the two operations, we're not talking about one trucking operation, but essentially two co-locating at this one facility. Um, we feel that uh, the hours of operation on the weekends, there will be no one there to enforce that. That is no one from the village uh, perspective. What we don't want to start out with is a bad neighbor uh, type of relationship where we're continuously calling the village, complaining about noise, complaining about frequency. That's aggravating for all. Uh, so we think that the best way to eliminate that is to simply uh, keep to the original uh, hours of operation uh, and, um, as I said, to um, deny that uh, request for Saturday, Sunday hours. And with that, again, thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Anyone else? May I just say a few words? Not yet. This is for okay. public comment. Any other public comment? You're a petitioner. Okay. Then at that point, we'll close the public comment. 
um, I note that the required notices went out from the village. We also have, which can be part of um, the record, Commissioner Hesner's comments, uh, though he was not able to be here this evening. So that's as well. Okay, now, what would you like to tell us? Just a few things um, after listening to the concerns of the residents that are across the street. Um, just a reminder, when the first student was there and they were functioning as a school bus company, the traffic was, if not as bad, but much worse when they were working as a bus company. The bus uh, makes so much more noise than the modern truck and the trailer. Um, so. Just to put it in perspective, uh, when you're listening to a school bus versus a truck that's coming in and not making any noise, there's definitely a huge difference. Um, also, um, whether there is a consolidation of two companies or not, the, um, the request for hours on Saturday and Sunday would have been the same. It doesn't matter whether we have uh, 15 trucks or or 25 trucks, we would have still been um, asking for extended hours for Saturday and Sunday just because of the type of business that we're in. The trucks uh, sometimes come in on Saturday. It just so happens it might have been broken down the, ro the road somewhere else. Um, it's a nationwide uh, trucking company. Um, also, um, we're improving the area, the landscaping and the fence. It's been sitting there for a number of years and it was not pretty, there's not enough plants, the fence is, is, is out of order and the building is not painted. So when we're coming in and making it prettier, we have no intention of, of making this area, uh, you know, looking uh, terrible. We are looking to improve it. So we will do everything we can to comply with the code, to improve the aesthetics of the area, uh, to make sure that the grass is green, that the trees are, are, are blooming and everything is in order. So uh, we will do everything we can to comply with everything you guys want us to uh, comply with. And uh, we will make sure that the residents across the street are not gonna be bothered by the noise. Uh, that is our intent. Thank you. So before you go, so I get a call from the HOA. Who am I calling in the office to deal with a squeaky gate or something? Who am I going to call? It's going to be Victoria Petrenko. The, the lady in or the yellow. Or Marius. Anyone who's sitting here. No, no. Who, who am I, who am I going to call? Am I going to call the lady in the yellow scarf here? No, you have they're, they're, they're team players, I understand. so whoever, they're all four of them right. are part of this uh, limited liability company. Right. All four of them are in it. They're putting their business in there. This is their life. No, this I get their it. Bread and but, water. But, so whoever is complaining, all of them will be dealing with it, but the people that will have better communication will be Marius Bubianas or uh, Victoria okay. Petrenko. Okay. Because, you know, from our standpoint, if, if this is approved, you know, we may say we want a liaison or a person, you know, so it may be Victoria or whomever Since that says, just came up, hey, um, this is the village sure. of Vernon Hills. Victoria, we got a problem. You know, we need to talk, uh, come out, bring your oil can. Let's <laughs> talk about, you know, you know, you got some dead plants out here. We need to get these taken care of, those types of things. And that, that's how we operate. Sure. I mean, I, our, our philosophy here is, We'd rather make a phone call to you guys and say, hey, we got, here's a problem. We need to figure out how to get this fixed, like now, um, versus. The baseball bat's not going to be used. Well, no, no. <laughs> no, no baseball bats, no whips, no anything. But in the same respect, it's kind of like, sure. hey, we need, to, we need to address this. We're going to come out and let's talk about this and see what we can do. I'll tell you, since this just came up and we didn't have an opportunity to discuss mm -hmm. this particular issue, I know that these guys are in it together so I will have a conversation about this and if there's any other questions that are related to who does what within the company sure. I will address that and then I will uh, let you know well and, and the other thing is Don's gonna call me and I'm gonna either call somebody over here Victoria or <laughs> I'm gonna call or I'm gonna have somebody call How about David no no David's gonna be <laughs> David's gonna be out of this he's worn down by now so 
but I'll call Victoria and, and okay. you know, somebody will, and we'll go over and, and that's going to be the kind of relationship we're going to have. Okay. And if I get a call on Monday who said, and from somebody who's saying, you know what, they worked all weekend, they were out busting tires in the, in the yard, that's a problem. You know, we're going to have to get on that ASAP okay. because, you know, like I said, Don's going to be calling me and I'm going to be calling you guys or somebody's going to call and say, we got to get this fit or you got to stop. Okay. Because the next, the next, you know, the next step in this, quite frankly, is we go back to the village board and we stand up and say, you know what, these guys aren't living by the terms of whatever the approvals are, and we got a problem. It's fair. So we'll take care of that. Okay. We'll, we'll come up with a designated okay. individual. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Anybody up here? I might also suggest uh, to maybe alleviate some of the concerns of the homeowners association, if. I'm assuming you're going to go on to the, uh, the board for our hearings as well. Yes. Um, that you will provide photos of what your current facilities look like so they can see what, how you take care of them or don't take care of them. Okay. Oh, yeah. They, they don't own this, the place in Mundelein, right? Say it again? They, they are leasing a they're place leasing, correct. In, in Mundelein. Correct. Okay. And uh, Victoria and Yuri leasing in Buffalo Grove. Do they lease there too? Yes. Okay, got it. So they're going to own this place. Correct. Okay. Are there any village restrictions on prairie materials on the weekends? Uh, yeah, the chairman just asked that. No, I don't believe there are. I mean, the, the restriction basically is one predicated on is there enough work? And um, are they, do they work on Saturdays and Sundays? Most of the, the contractors don't work on Sundays. In fact, they can't work, contractors can't work in the village on Sundays. But that doesn't mean they couldn't work in another community. Right, concrete gets delivered many miles away. Right. right, exactly. And I know a lot of concrete companies that do do a lot of deliveries on Saturdays. Right. So, but, so as of right now, there are no restrictions. I'm not aware of any. Okay. And how about complaints? Have we, do we get complaints about their operation? Uh, um, dust and dirt. That's that's been the biggest complaint that that we've gotten over the years. So and you know, starting with the bus company guys, you know, complaining about blowing dust, and then actually we visited them this week about dust and dirt on the road. So that's been the biggest complaint. And actually, the the, the concrete plant is they're actually talking about doing some modernization of that plant and doing some internalizing of the structure and internalizing of the operations. So it actually will be a better facility than what was previously been there so something you should be aware of too <laughs> okay um can we address the fence for a second and i guess either you win or you lose todd right now you're proposing 65 i think it's 65 feet which takes you to effectively the western edge of the self-storage building eastern edge so it's actually or the eastern i'm sorry that's right so it's, it was actually it's a total of you're adding it's a total of 80 feet, feet from the corner right. which is a, from the existing right of way it's 100 feet gotcha okay so the comment was 120 feet we didn't know what the point of reference well, was okay and so we feel that based on what's out there now with landscaping and, and Burmian and stuff um, extending it we don't see the significant benefit to extending it past that building. Okay, fair enough. So we're committing that we will revise the plans to extend westerly an additional 65 feet to get to the eastern edge of the building. Okay, fair enough. If, if you are on Butterfield heading um, southbound, okay, first off, your initial, as you're on this, you're initially going to be blocked by the buildings. You're going to have to get fairly close then to your property line before you can kind of see between the building and the fence. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you're going 40 miles an hour. Until there's a truck that turns in front of you, then you're slowing down. <laughs> okay. Is there, in, in the interest of, we're going to say neighborliness at this point, is there some sort of compromise between maybe what the HOA was talking about and what you're proposing here that takes it? somewhat past the end of that building so that becomes such an acute angle that you really can't unless you crane your neck and stand on your head you can see into your yard um it, I, 
can I get a point of reference to the 120 feet? It, it, it's off the new, the new corner. The new corner, right. right. So that'd be an additional 40 feet right. of a fence. Um, well, no, it's 80 feet from the new corner to the front face of that build. Uh, the correct. So it'd be another an additional 40 feet 40 of fence going, feet, right. going to the west. Um, I, is, is 40 feet, is, is that going to be a, is that a deal breaker? I would say a couple of more. If they want to extend the fence, or even if you go stay further, split the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Are you willing to do that? Yeah. Right. 20 feet, 16 feet, yeah, 16 feet. Right. What, um, Todd, what do you feel would block the view? I, so we already have trees, we already have fans, and someone. What, what they're trying to do is decrease this angle coming this direction. Right. The ultimate solution is to try to coordinate with the owner of the self-storage to turn the fence 90 degrees to touch their building. Okay. That requires cooperation of the village of Mundelein and that property owner because it's not our property. Gotcha. Is it something that we could approach? Yes. We can't guarantee that we can do that, yeah. um, but we can ask the question. Um, extending it another 40 feet, we're willing to do that uh, the, the buyers are willing to do that. If, if it's necessary, but okay. if it's not necessary to do 40 feet, maybe we can do less, meet somewhere in the middle, or approach the Mundelein Village okay. and see L if they L would allow us. Okay, let me ask you this then. Let's cut through it. And then I'm going to ask the HOA the same thing. I just don't see, I don't, I'm, I, I'm I, trying to I, understand what I, the I get it, is. But, but it's a concern. Okay. If, if we made a condition of our approval that the Village Board would then have to vote on, that in the alternative that you would first contact, it's really the whoever that owner, I don't know who owns self -storage, it. Self-storage. The self-storage about connecting your fence essentially to the north from where you are. Okay, that would block the, if you will, the, the view in. Or if that was unsuccessful, you would agree then to extend your fence further to the west. And I think we're talking about, what are these, are eight-foot fence sections? Yeah, 40 and, feet. Okay. Between oh, this posts? between posts is like six to seven feet. Okay, so what would it have to be? So we're talking uh, an additional 40 feet no. westerly Wait, of no, 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 the building. No, 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 listen, listen. Two to three posts. So that's 16, that's 15 feet. 15, 16, 15, 18 feet. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay, you'd be willing, okay. Yes. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Baby steps. But thank you, Mr. Morris. I, I, I really do appreciate you. Uh, uh, Negotiating on uh, on everyone's behalf. Uh, there there is no screening, no uh, plant screening on Fair that enough. northern fence. I mean, I, I drive no. south. Uh, Fair enough, but we, we can't change the screening on somebody else's property. But if they do what we just suggest, to either connect north on this little white line where the arrow is that says 65, or if unsuccessful that owner, they come back another two or three fence sections, which is either 16 or what is it, 16 or 24 feet. Does that do it? Because then you have to be at quite an angle to see in. I, well, I would like to relieve that ability to see into the yard, except for that acute angle, as right. you as you refer to it. Right now, stopping it at sure. the point at which they're they're uh, proposing. But, but we're past that. We're, we're trying to do something different now. If, if we do this, I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to try to push something on. Push the horrible word, for especially for a lawyer. Push something on the petitioner. And then have you come back and say, well, we're still unhappy. You know, if you're not happy about this, I'm not going to ask them to do it. It's really the answer. We're going to talk about something mm -hmm. else. Is this something you'd be I, happy Well, with? I, don't have a, I don't have a sense whether 15 feet is the magic number, again, to relieve that mm -hmm. visual versus a full 40 or perhaps more. We had originally uh, requested that the fence feet. extend halfway along that okay. northern property line. Okay. That was well, deemed less than reasonable. Uh, we understand. Uh, we think the uh, additional 40 feet, that is to the 120 uh, roughly, was uh, an appropriate accommodation and would in fact relieve that, that sighting, that, that uh, ability to see directly into the yard except for that acute angle. Uh, again, I don't know if, that, if 40 feet is a magic number mm -hmm. or 15. I simply want to be able to eliminate that ability day after day to look directly into that yard full of trucks. Okay. Just it, and perhaps it, it re would require a site visit. I I, I don't know. Um, 
the I'm having a hard time understanding the relevance of yeah. cars passing and seeing a truck after they've just passed a storage yeah. facility and they're about to hit a concrete facility. Yeah. I care more about what are the people across the street see. Yeah, the concrete, well, the people across the street are concerned about what they see day in and day out. But as, as was mentioned, we've spent a lot of money and the village spent money many, many years ago uh, creating that berm. We've added density and it looks great uh, yeah, to it. And we will continue to maintain it as a, as a homeowner association. But more importantly, it's, it's not just what the homeowner sees because there's only a handful of homeowners that can stand in their backyard, see through any of the screening to that actual location. However, someone who comes to a prospective buyer uh, in Murfield Village will travel on Butterfield Road. They'll drive around the neighborhood, they'll drive up and down, they'll see, do we like what we see? Coming south, they say, you know what? We don't like what we see. Uh, I'm trying for the benefit of my residents to okay. minimize, if not mitigate that completely. Okay. Okay. We did some very inefficient, because I'm certainly not an engineer, I'm a lawyer, but by kind of holding a straight edge, which is my pen in this case, looking at it, it looks like to get rid of that because of the, where that building is compared to where the road, we're probably something in between, like maybe around 20 feet. Um, you can look at it as well and talk with the petitioners, but what we're going to at least look at at this stage is, is first the north-south fence section, if they'll do it, and that cuts off everything. That totally does it. And then we're going to look at, at this interim amount, and we can show you the kind of the, ge the geometrics of it later. Mm -hmm. My next question is, though, and you guys will stay for this, you have concerns about the landscape. With what we heard from the landscape architect, and let's put warranty aside for a moment, Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit unclear what concerns still exist on your HOA behalf versus what they've addressed. Uh, well, some of the species uh, evergreen that they've proposed to plant are arborvitae. We do, as it was mentioned, have arborvitae. Uh -huh. uh, they've been homeowner planted, I will say that, not HOA planted, mm -hmm. on uh, the uh, uh, perimeter fence on Greg's Landing. If you were to come up to those trees, you would view them uh, as burned from the, from the front, the portion that faces the road. If you're standing in the homeowner's yard, it appears green. That's just the nature of the salt spray. But again, they are not, I've asked our landscape contractor, are they a salt tolerant okay. species? Okay. Um, do you, I, I have no problem switching them to uh, Eastern Red Cedar. Is that acceptable? If that's a salt tolerant species, yes, sir. Yeah. I, I know I mean, that arborvitae are not. Okay. That's why yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we'll switch it we to uh, eastern red cedar. Okay. I don't. It's going to be subject to the village's landscape architect's yep. approval because I can't. I'm as much as I'm not an engineer. I'm less of a green thumb. Thank you. Okay. So did, that. Did you want me to speak to the other? What else? Uh, landscape. Yes. What else? Uh, well, just the other concerns uh, with respect to density. We uh, actually sat down with uh, John, myself, some other members of the HOA, looked at the landscape plan and uh, gave some input that we thought would be modest, but yet uh, enhance uh, significantly the overall look um, of that uh, front, front frontage. Are we talking about the north portion of what's called detail one? Um, I don't know. Do you want to put, you want to put it up? up? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't see. Okay. Are, are we talking about the portion where the fence turns in? Uh, that is one area that uh, okay. we addressed with, uh, with John Kalmar. Okay. In, we cannot, as, the, as a village, clearly have you do something contrary to someone's right of way. Right. However, if it can be done consistent with Lake County's right of way and their approvals, do you have a problem extending what is on the east side of the fence to the property line? Um, and they, the angled portion there, and yes, I, forgot to, I forgot to address Fair that. Enough in my presentation, we are agreeable to extend, basically take what we have there, um, instead of our variety, we'll put in Eastern Red Cedar, right. um, and we'll 
we can you know put that up on that angled area subject to lake county highway department approval that the reason we have stayed out of it right okay okay i'm not guaranteeing no no no, no. the one thing i learned as a lawyer when everybody wins we stop talking okay. <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise we'll talk ourselves out of things okay so okay then uh, other concerns as uh, i think i brought up previously had to do with the seating we had uh, asked if sod would be something or could be something that uh, could be considered. We understand that carries a more significant price tag, requires yes. initial watering uh, in order to take, but has a much, much better look. Uh, my, my concern was that seed unattended, especially during conditions like we've been experiencing over the last several weeks, will turn into a weed patch. I understand. Okay. which will be more troublesome to rectify than if we had done it some different way at the start. Fair enough. Before you talk, is the petitioner through its landscape architect willing to submit for purposes of getting this to take and be maintained so we have a, a lawn that's there, a green lawn, to provide, I'm, and I'm gonna use it non-technical term because I don't know what the technical term is, some sort of, you know, installation slash initiation slash maintenance program that they could coordinate with the village landscape architect to make sure all this happens? Yes, I can provide. Typically, those are provided as part of the final landscape plan, so I can certainly okay. provide those. Okay. And then, of course, if it doesn't, the proverbial, to use my now lawyer speak, you're not off the hook. <laughs> you remain on the hook for yeah. getting Understood. it. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Um, and on top of that, just to relieve your, we are, um, the final specification for the seed will be an IDOT road mix, which usually, as you know, on highways, they do not water. Right, but, but the concern but, is not that it's the right mix, it's that it's the right mix that takes appropriately so we right. don't have, you know, right. something we don't want there. But you're willing to do that with a yeah. plan with the village. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes, what thank you. What other problems with landscaping? Um, John, if you can refresh my memory, anything from your notes, the, uh, the species, the density, yeah. uh, uh, the okay. lawn. Yep. Um, Keep going. Oh, the, uh, the uh, roll. change from uh, daylilies to. Yeah. You wanted a mix. Yes, so that's yes, what yes, they yes. Said. Agreed. color, they color, agreed. color. Agreed to that already. Right. Uh, I think, uh, I think we're, we're very close with respect to the landscape okay. issues. The, and then the blue spruce is for the Doug, Doug first, so they're good with that. And the eastern cedar somethings for right. the arborvitae. And, that, and that was for Chet. So. Right. And if we have any problems, I'm calling Victoria. So she, she'll be getting a call about. I have a big help being on the team. Okay. <laughs> we, will, we will become best friends. All right. We're <laughs> friends. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Time out. Time out. If you're going to talk, you really have to talk to the microphone because this is televised and the entire village is watching. <laughs> All right, we didn't tell you that. <laughs> okay, now you brought this up so you don't really need to. I want, from an operational standpoint, okay, I, can you address really three things and they're gonna sound kind of funny. Okay, there was the question of noise, there was the question of diesel exhaust, because I assume these are diesel trucks, and thirdly, it was just the overall aesthetics of this operation of this yard. Most of the aesthetics I think we've kind of addressed, but what do you have in place to try to minimize any of these? You said there's no idling, is that correct? Yeah, correct. So, there's no, so the trucks they are actually turned off? Yes. Okay, so there's no idling of trucks. I think I read in the packet that there is, um, or there are electrical outlets, so you don't have to warm these up. They actually have, correct. I don't know whether it's engine block heaters or whatever you're using. So, and yes, you're going to be using uh, edge of block. Well, okay. So you're going to continue to use that as part of your operation. Yes. Which will minimize the impact on surrounding areas. Yeah. It's in, a in the cold weather, is the need to keep uh, engine running to heat up. And engine. that's part of your operation plans. So that should have some effect. What about, and I don't know much, and maybe I should turn to my right anymore. I haven't represented a trucking company in some time. I know that there are changes and differences in terms of exhaust now and cleaner running trucks. You know. I can tell you that the modern diesel emits so few fumes compared to what everyone thinks they used to nowadays, you, you could hardly tell. So 
so tell us about your fleet of trucks what are these are these age are these vintage trucks from the 1960s or no it's uh, almost uh, almost all truck, almost all trucks uh, in my fleet, they have uh, EGR uh, that is, I can it's EGR system, it's for cleaning uh, exhaust system. Okay. Uh, probably have uh, only two trucks with that, without that system. And how I know it now for wire trucking is they have uh, all trucks with the EGR system. Okay. And I don't know what that is. Do you, you want to tell us? It's a... It's a cleaning system do it comes through the exhaust and they burn cleaner they uh, they even have regenerative or they send fuel back in the oh, region okay. to re and they all use recook. the clean diesel now and they all use the clean diesel fuel now okay. which is all required so okay and that's the the your business if I, you will plan moving forward my guess is also at some point if it isn't already it's going to be required by whatever environmental laws or other sort of licensing right. laws we have okay right. So we have that. So okay. we have the noise, we have the smell, and about aesthetics, um, we have every intention of, sorry. sorry. About the aesthetics, uh, we uh, referred to the building earlier. Uh, we have every intention of fixing up the building. Uh, we have every intention of having the, uh, the sign. We want to look very professional. Uh, this is going to be something that they own. So, you know. So let's talk about ours, but let's talk about it in a little okay. bit different way. When the bus company was there, and I was not there at all hours, but when I would drive up and down Butterfield myself, the manner by which this building is accessed is on the north and the south faces of that building, or where the bays are, the doors. And Correct. they seem to op their mode of operation seemed to always be we open the door in the morning, and we close it sometime at night. What is your operation? Is, if you're working on these vehicles during the week or on weekends or whatever time, is it in a closed building or are you just simply in the building and the doors are open and it might as well be outside in the lot? It depends on the weather. If the cold outside, you can work with open doors. Uh, it's a, I believe in a weather like, uh, like now, you should be open doors. Okay. How many bay you have what? Um, I gotta find it. You have five bays, is that right? Or five doors? Yes. Okay. From an operational standpoint, how many trucks are going to be worked on here at any given time? It depends. It's need a bunch of mechanics, and they're planning to have a two, probably uh, on the beginning, only two mechanics, so they can work only on the two trucks. Okay. The, the doors that face to the south, which would be towards prairie materials, if you look at whatever this one is. Okay. I don't know how you're going to set up the inside of your building. It's sheet two of three. I don't know how you're going to set up the inside of your building. Is there any way for you to concentrate, except when overflow times, using those entries and exits and using those bays to minimize any impact on the surrounding residences, which might be more impacted by something to the north? I can look here. What am I doing? So, so they're asking you to use the southern doors more frequently, primarily, than the northern doors. So, if you're working on one or two trucks to to go on the south, okay, versus on the north, from a surface in your vehicles, keep the doors open. If you're going to if you're going to have the doors open, open them on the south, okay, to to minimize any disturbance to the residents. Rather okay. than always doing on the north. Okay, it's, it's no problem. I can see the problem. So there's going to be no problem <laughs> keeping the south door open. Okay. Are you asking them to keep the south doors closed all the time? No, I. You mean the north doors closed? Yes. North no. Doors. No, but that they would. The primary use would be the south, which would be against prairie materials. It, it, if it's a hot day. It, it, that's not air conditioned. They're going to need some circulation through the is, building. Is that an, a condition that we're going to put in there? I don't know if it's a condition, but I'm really more curious about how they're going to operate. Because I, I think that is a bit unreasonable. No, that's fine. Okay. No, I, but I'm more curious about how they're going to operate. Yeah. No, I, right. I understand. Yeah. It's just, it, 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 bottom line is they're going to fix trucks. Yeah. And it gets hot, and they're going to leave the doors open. Yeah. I don't know. 
Go ahead. Okay. Um, we're going to get to your question. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, <laughs> it's actually a question for Mr. Kalmer. On the history of the property, um, the existing conditions as they are, let's, I'm just assuming that how they visually are now, is that similar to how they were before Greg's Landing was built? So I'm assuming that this is how this property looked before Greg's, the homes were built in Greg's Landing? As far as I know, yes. Okay. Yes. So, and, and they've been you know, working on buses there for years, and Don can testify to that, it, you know, and the noise and everything associated with so it. So this is actually a big improvement from when the homeowners first bought in there of what they're getting now. Well, I, you know, um, I, I think what's being proposed is a, is, is a substantial en enhancement of the front of the property and everything like that. So, um, you know, the, the technology of the equipment, is, as I think has been testified, is, is much improved. Um, both from the emission standpoint and, and the, the engine technologies and the like. Um, I, I don't know the maintenance, how the maintenance are done on trucks versus buses, so right. it's hard for me to do a comparison. But as, as far as an aesthetic view, they're now getting a solid fence and more landscaping. Well, I, I, I think it, it's improved from a couple of standpoints. I mean, I think the overall enhancement with the new fence and the new landscaping and everything like that's going to be... Uh, uh, a, a significant enhancement but more importantly is you're going to have the owner on the property i mean these are going to be the people who are going to own it they're going to be there they're going to maintain it they're going to get um not not like a manager from the bus company who get who may get rotated every year to a different facility these folks are going to own the property and they're going to be invested in this um significantly invested and i'm and from the village's standpoint we know who we're going to call if there are any <laughs> issues uh, and the like so um so and that that is really the difference here that i think versus the bus company in the past and, I, and i'm not going to tell you that the bus company was a bad neighbor um for the most part um but i think we've got a substantial improvement in, in the overall ownership and opportunities here okay, okay. <clears throat> anybody else on the commission would you like to add anything is that it? okay um what we have this evening is a series of requests that are in front of the commission and we're going to do them kind of in series uh, the first is the uh, i guess the more straightforward one it's a motion to recommend approval uh, consistent with the findings set forth within our packet as required by section 21.7 of the zoning ordinance to amend the zoning district map of the village of vernon hills so the zoning classification on the legally described property is from R1 single family residential rezone to BP business park district. We need a second for that. Second. Okay, any discussion on just the rezoning? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Ballou. Yes. Ms. Cotton. Yes. Mr. Hesner, Mr. Heidner. Yes. Mr. Mulcrone. Yes. Mr. Gorog. Yes. Chairman Morris. Yes. Okay. Next is still text amendments. It's to recommend approval to amend the following sections and articles in Appendix C of the Code of Ordinances. First, Article 3, Section 3.2 adds the definition of motor vehicle terminal to mean any premises used by a motor vehicle or similar company for the purpose of storing, maintaining, loading, and unloading of trucks and related vehicles, including trailers, without the long-term storage of any goods or items on the subject property. And we need to I guess we can do them all at once, or should we do them separately, John? How do you want to? Uh, you can do them all at once. Okay. If you're, if Next you're... is an amendment to Article 16 to add self storage or commercial storage facilities as permitted uses, and then to add special uses as a motor vehicle terminal yard or facility, including motor vehicle service repair, washing, truck, and trailer parking, and or garage facilities, and similar accessory uses, subject to the conditions of use A through H, which have been provided. And, and may I may, may make a slight change to take out, um, well, David, why don't you give the language real quick. Uh, John and I talked uh, about this. It's, it's really a clarification in the second line to uh, take out truck and trailer uh, terminal because it's really repetitious. Uh, in terms of motor vehicles, because motor vehicles Are. does include trucks. Right. Okay. okay, fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. So we need a second on that motion. Second. Okay, we need a roll call. 
Mr. Gorog. Yes. Mr. Mulcrum. Yes. Mr. Heidner. Yes. Mr. Hesner. Ms. Cotton. Yes. Mr. Ballou. Yes. Chairman Morris. Yes. Okay. Now, next is a motion to recommend approval of a special use permit to allow a motor vehicle terminal yard or facility and related accessory uses uses on the legally described property pursuant to the new section 16.3.9 that we just recommended approval for, along with certain variations, including but not limited to lot size setbacks for the sign, screen fencing for the property. And then it is subject to the conditions of approval that have been in our packet. Plus this evening, um, we added, and I guess this is 11, for lack of a better word, um, that. You know, 12. Or, it would be 12. Or 12, I'm sorry, 12. 12 would be that the petitioner would work with the building, or, or sorry, the property owner to the north in the village of Mundelein to secure approval of a connection of the fence north from their property line to the self-storage building. And failing that in the alternative would agree and agrees to extend their fence west along their north property line. Um, rather than the additional 65 feet suggested what do we say, 20, that would 25? Be 80, 80, 80 feet. Let's get, well, what's the right number to get this? Make 20. Sense. An additional 20 feet over what was provided. Secondly, they agree to the statements made during the landscape plan uh, presentation, the changes to the landscape plan. Thirdly, they also have agreed during their presentation to do the building tuck point repair and painting. Fourth. There was an agreement there there would be no storage of any hazardous materials in trucks on the site. Fifth, it is not will not be used for purposes of freight transfer or container storage. Six, they will, the petitioner, designate a liaison with the village as a point of contact for issues. Seventh, you're going to have to help me. You're changing the arbor vitis on the plan to? Eastern Red Cedar. That's right what I said. Um, there's another change too on that. Um, uh, they'll provide um, uh, if if approved by uh, right. Lake County I, DIT, uh, DOT, right. um, the landscaping will be extended along the, the face of that fence to the north, the new north. A um, detail one. Right. And they also agreed to provide um, spec grass for IDOT specifications and provide the village with a installation and maintenance program for approval as a part of the landscape plan. The okay. And then what I suggest we do is at this point is we take out 10 and we vote on that separately, which is hours of operation. So our motion would be without 10. Okay. Did I miss anything? Um, uh, just a recognition that there is a new condition number five. Number five. Oh, yes, that's It's also attached to your packet. Right. Okay. And also that we have the uh, 18, the section 18.3 right. findings also as part of our vote. Okay. Now, with that, did I miss anything or are we in a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on this one? Okay. We need a vote. Ms. Cotton. Yes. Mr. Ballou. Yes. Mr. Heidner? Yes. Mr. Mulcrone? Yes. Mr. Gorog? Yes. Chairman Morris? Yes. And I'll note that I appreciate the petitioner working with both the village and the HOA across the street in reaching the concessions both prior to tonight's meeting and at this evening's meeting in the issue of we're all good neighbors in the village of Vernon Hills. Okay. Next, we need to, as part of the uh, vote with respect to special use, is whether an additional condition, which previously was condition 10, would be, um, in, I'm trying to think what's supposed to do it, do two of them, one with this, then one with the extended one to get a vote on both? What do you want to do uh, it? You could, you could do them separately if you okay. like. Okay, then the first would be an additional condition of the special use that the hour, we're going to do two of these, that the hours of operation shall be as follows. No restriction on work within the office portion of the building but vehicle maintenance may occur only on Monday through Friday between the hours of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. All work except for emergency repairs must occur entirely within the garage building. And as we pointed out this evening, though not a specific condition, uh, 
you would endeavor to do your work in the south bays to avoid the issue of the residences disruption and we're going to a separate one about the extended hours ok so we need a second on just the 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. condition I'll second. ok any discussion on that ok we need a vote Mr. Ballou? Yes. Ms. Cotton? Yes. Mr. Hesner? Mr. Heidner? Yes. Mr. Mulcrone? Yes. Mr. Gorog? Yes. Chairman Morris? Yes. Okay. And we have a second motion on this, not a second, but another motion, which is almost in the alternative, that the hours of operation shall be no restriction on work within the office portion of the building, but vehicle maintenance may occur Monday through Friday between the hours of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday between the hours of 8 to 5 p.m., and Sunday between the hours of 10 to 3. Still, all work except for emergency repairs must occur entirely within the garage building, and you'll endeavor to do it through the south bays. Okay. So we need a second on that. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the extended hours issue? Okay. We need a vote. Mr. Ballou? Yes. Ms. Cotton? Yes. Mr. Hesner? Mr. Heidner? Yes. Mr. Mulcrone? Yes. Mr. Gorog? Yes. Chairman Morris? Yes. Okay. Um, Final lands, site and landscape. Find work. Someplace I put my motion. Where are they? Oh, here we go. <clears throat> then we have a motion to recommend preliminary and final site and landscaping plan approvals as amended by the presentation by the landscape architect and the additional conditions and agreements reached at this evening's meeting. We need a second for that. Second. Okay. <laughs> Too slow. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, we need a roll call. Mr. Gorog? Yes. Mr. Mulcrum? Yes. Mr. Heidner? Yes. Mr. Hesner, Ms. Cotton? Yes. Mr. Ballou? Yes. Chairman Morse? Yes. Okay. okay. What have I missed? I think that's it. Okay. This goes to the village board when? September 17th. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, we have no development review. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I see we have certain discussion items. Are these? Um, yeah, just just a series or a list of items that you guys will be looking at um, in the future. Um, McDonald's right now is looking at adding a drive-through, doing major exterior renovations, and also new landscaping. So that will require an amendment of the special use permit. Um, as as we go forth, where are they putting in more drive-through? Well, they're going to take out a part of their parking lot to do it, and it'll be out and in real quick. It, it's it's not going to be a full two lanes around the building. Oh, okay. Um, they are trying to st stick as many people through that thing as possible. Um, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, but Portola doesn't do a very good job of theirs. No. <laughs> um, the Springs of Vernon Hills is the. Um, uh, memory care facility that's going on the former County Mayo site. Everybody remembers where County Mayo is down at North and South Woodbine and uh, Milwaukee across from Walter Smith. It's the vacant land there. Um, it's, a, it's actually a pretty low impact type of use and uh, you'll see that. I'm, I'm guessing you'll see that either by the end of this year or in the first quarter of next year. It's, Thirdly, it, it's on the west side west south side. of Smith? Correct. West side. Yeah, okay. yeah, it'll share the intersection. The driveway will line up with Smith's on Woodbine. So, third, uh, former Opus Salerno restaurant sites. There, somebody's looking at a reuse there. Um, well, they've been talking about residential, but that's still in in play right now. It's Taxman Corporation who did Port Clinton um, and uh, Vernon Hills Town Center. And then Port Clinton Place. Uh, you saw the Opus development uh, redevelopment there. Um, and then finally, uh, zoning code amendments um, with the state passing the medical cannabis uh, uh, program, um, we have a finite period of time in which I need to bring to you all regulations on how to regulate distribution facilities. And so that everybody understands, there are certain exemptions that are created in the law that basically said, there's a 200 or 2,500 foot radius around existing schools, daycares, and uh, several other items. So it winds up being about a football field size area with the village um, that we can regulate or, for these types of facilities. So 
Um, so you'll, I'm working, trying to get some information from the municipal conference to see if anybody's done anything, and we'll be bringing that to you sometime before the end of the year. So, does the new state ordinance require all villages to allow this, or do they give them the opportunity to opt out? Uh, it, it preempted home rule authority, okay, so we do, we can't opt out. Okay, because I know in some states, communities have the yeah. ability to opt out. Yep. But can't. not here. No. Okay. Now again, the exemptions that that they set, the exempted areas that they set up, um, we have done a very nice job strategically placing our schools. So it really does punch a big hole in the community. Um, the, the downside to it, unfortunately, is we're covered by two uh, senatorial districts, state senatorial districts, and and every district gets one location. So we're covered on the north end and on the south end, unfortunately. So yep. you know. If we only had one, it would be even better. But you know, yeah. so so anyway, that's um, those that's on the horizon. So, and that's all I got. Okay, we have the minutes of August fourteenth, twenty thirteen. We need a motion to approve those. So oh. moved. A second. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Jerry, saying anybody opposed? Okay, those get passed. There's nothing else. We have a motion to adjourn. We need a second. Take your pick, John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to that one? Okay, good night. We'll at least sort that one out. So. Just